Now, standing next to history, it was a day that changed America forever, the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Tonight, we give you a side of the story few have heard until now. And we sit down with one of the detectives assigned to guard Lee Harvey Oswald to shed new light on one of the country's darkest days. Walt Buteau is here now with a story only on Eyewitness News tonight. JFK was stationed in the Navy in Rhode Island, was married here, and summered here while he was president. Now a detective who investigated the assassination takes us back to the day it all ended. I didn't shoot anybody, sir. I haven't been told what I'm here for. The tall Texan next to Lee Harvey Oswald is Dallas homicide detective Elmer Boyd. He was almost always to Oswald's left. Guarding him in the days following the assassination. One of us was there all the time. Half a century later, Boyd sat down with us. What was he like? Well, he would talk to you about anything except shooting the president. Uh, the rest of the time, he was as cool as he could be. Boyd tells us he was there for about 80% of the interrogations. He would give you an answer. It wasn't always the, the truth. As the ambassador. JFK's ties to Rhode Island date back to World War II. He trained at the Newport Naval Base and was married in Newport about a decade later. The world is very different now. After his inauguration, Hammersmith Farm became known as the Summer White House. I'm still hanging in there. Yes, you are. Boyd was also in the Navy, which brought him to war work for the reunion of the USS Bailey. As Kennedy rose to power, Boyd climbed the ranks in the Dallas Police Department. And on November 22nd, 1963, their paths would cross. Boyd was among the security contingent watching Dealey Plaza as Kennedy's motorcade weaved by packed sidewalks. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. After the arrest, Detective Boyd began flanking Oswald's left. The only time he wasn't there was seen live from Dallas to Rhode Island and just about everywhere else as Jack Ruby fired. Oswald has been shot. After guarding Oswald for two straight days, Boyd got some time off and was with his father-in-law watching. And I told him, I said, that looked like old Jack Ruby. There's the man with a gun. And sure enough, it was. You knew who it was. I knew it was. Lee Oswald has been shot. What did you know about Jack Ruby at that point? Well, I know he was an old nightclub operator. He wasn't a big mafia thing like they tried to make him out. He didn't talk about the case in public for about 40 years until he noticed so many others offering what he knew was false information. As someone who was dialed in, he has little doubt Oswald acted alone. I don't think it was a conspiracy now. Like I said, I don't try to change anybody else's opinion. After Oswald was killed, Boyd was back on duty, watching Ruby, who told him and his partner a shocker. So if you and Mr. Boyd had been with him, I might not have shot him. Do you think about that sometimes? Well, yeah, I think about that. I just wonder, you know. Of the 20 detectives who investigated the assassination, Boyd tells us he's one of only two who are still alive. Walt Buteau, Eyewitness News. Standing next to history continues tomorrow on Eyewitness News This Morning. Find out why a brutal act by Oswald convic convic convinced, I should say, Detective Boyd that the assassin acted alone.